All right, welcome to Racing Roots with Ham, and I'm joined today by Dawson Cram and Kevin Cram, uh, and and also y'all can introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Ashley Cram, and this is Kelly Cram. Kelly Cram, okay, and y'all are our siblings to Dawson, is yeah, that right? That's my sister, and that's my cousin. Oh, sister so, and cousin, okay. Sister thought, first, cousin second. Yeah, I bet y'all get called sisters a lot. A lot. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure. She also has an identical twin, so then it really starts getting. She oh, does help me. okay. Yeah. Wow, that would be very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we got um, Dawson Cram here, who's a he races in the Truck Series, and uh, so what are they calling the Truck Series now? I'll let you tell that. Uh, the Gander Al the Gander RV Outdoors Truck Series. Okay. It's kind of long. Yeah, it is kind of long. It seems like it changes all the time, every year. So going to change right. again next year. Is it really? What's yeah. It? yeah, that'll be four years in a row. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Going back to Camp World, set, still oh. the same guy running running everything you okay know? but um so it's gonna be camping going back world. to camp board yep i'm trying i was trying to remember i was talking to kimberly you got about kimberly or kim okay um depends on if i'm mad at her well, or not. <laughs> yeah I could see that. <laughs> yes i was talking to her earlier and she was actually involved in the trucks and i was telling her i was involved with them when they first came out and she said i was too um so i, I remember them being the the super trucks i just don't remember who the main sponsor was but we had a coors light truck and i'm pretty sure jay salter was our driver Somewhere around 96. Yeah, so Craftsman. Craftsman. If you think about it. Yep. That's right. Yep, yep. Yes. And there was a uh, there was a Sears diehard truck way back then that um, yes. PJ um, Jones drove. PJ Jones, yes. Yeah. I remember him. Yep. I so think that was before he was born, probably. Way before, way before Ashley yes. was born. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, little story there. Ashley was on the B post of our, of our uh, truck. Stacy Compton, right? Yeah, Stacy mm -hmm. Compton's truck. When she was born, down there, and uh, we ran Disney Disney World at oh. a racetrack. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. They ran one race and closed that thing down. I believe it's still there. Inside, I mean, you went by yeah. Mickey Mouse's ears, and oh, they yeah. set up a stage, and we raced and got out of there. But Ashley was on the B post for that one. So, is it one of those tracks that's over getting overgrown? Like like Wilkesboro, or is it so probably I not? Don't, I no, I don't think so because yeah. I don't go down there. But I believe that um, one of the driving schools u utilizes it in there. Okay, yeah, very cool. Um, I, Kenny Cole's back. Do you know Carvin Kenny? Yes. Yeah, he just came on and said Craftsman. So he was refreshing our memories on that. So yeah, he's tuned in. And uh, Chad Hyder and Tay Childress and Scott Trevison's down in Daytona. You know the beer man? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's down there on his boat, Sea Tunes. Uh, he's tuned in. A lot of times he comes in here with me. We actually started this. Uh, it was called the NASCAR Live uh, Chat with Ham and the Beer Man. Oh, really? Two years ago. It's been just a little over two years ago, yeah. And so now we're just uh, now I just changed the name a little bit. But Rachel Robbins down in Charlotte. Chad Hyder's in Ohio. So we got people from all over the place tuning in. And uh, we got Phil sitting over here. Phil Cavalli's back with us. Uh, and he's going to read some of the comments and questions when as they come in. And Mike Bear, hello, Mike. And uh, Sissy O'Dell. i just like to say, uh, give shout-outs to everybody that are tuned in. Uh, Don Clark's tuned in from Statesville. So basically, this is your show. You talk about yourself and uh, whichever one you want to start with, either Kevin or Dawson. Um, Y'all just tell us how you got started. Well, how about you first, Kevin, because how did you get started? Oh, my gosh. In NASCAR, and what year was that? Uh, so NASCAR professionally would be 95, okay. 1995. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um in 90 in 94 they were talking about building that that truck series there mm -hmm. and i was up in massachusetts and we were running we were racing about three to four nights a week plus working full-time jobs it was our hobby you know right. we we're still racing a, a ton so we would go to work to rest and um <clears throat> and um a couple of the people that we raced against up there had have migrated down here so they were starting that truck series and i wanted to um I kind of wanted to progress through the sport as fast as I could, and I thought that uh, starting off in a, in a new series would would progress me the the, f the fastest. Right. And I also didn't want to be like um, stuck in just building cowls or side skirts. Right. Or, yes. You know, I didn't. It happens I, a lot. And it happens a lot, and I didn't. Teams. I wanted to do everything. You know. Mm -hmm. So um, I get in the truck series in '95 was was um, was why I chose to do that. And it, and it was with Dave Rosendes. Yeah, do you remember, remember him? I do, yeah. Yep. Dave Rosendes did a deal with Jeff Bodine, and he shared the seat with Jeff, 
and it was the um, uh, Exide truck. So it was a, it was kind of a eighties yeah. paint scheme, if you remember. Yeah, because Jeff was driving. Was he driving that car he, in the he, Cup Series at the time? He was. Yeah. yeah. So he had um, he had the trucks doing that, and then and then the other. So a neat deal. That's where we got started, and um, uh, that's why I came down here. Yeah. So how long did you work in the in the truck series? Um, probably till ninety nine. Um, so what happened was, we I came down in ninety five. We did that deal there. Um, my wife, who I didn't even know at that time. Uh, she was working for TNN at the time, and um, she was Ron Hornady was her godfather, and her dad, who owns Fluidine High Performance, uh, sponsored Ron. So they were mm-hmm. kind of migrating from uh, the California coast, coming this way in, inside right. all the racing stuff, and and Ron brought a lot of California people here, if you really think about it. Yeah. Um, and um, so she was part of that, and we met. Uh, we were racing in in. Uh, Gosh, uh, Portland, Oregon, and um, Jeff Bodine had Tanya Tucker was going to parade yeah. the cup field around Sonoma. Hornady mm-hmm. was racing Kimberly's uh, dad's car in the Southwest Tour race, so she had to get down there, and she needed a ride, so I gave her a ride. Oh, okay. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. So, that, yeah. The, you know, 95 was a very big year for uh for me personally with everything that was going on there in 96 uh i i ended up going to work with ron over at at dei and got to meet earnhardt and work for him Mm -hmm. and uh we did the the truck deal there and won lots of races championships did all that stuff great a great time you know yeah but it still wasn't um exactly what i want to do i i moved down here to to crew chief something you know so uh I, i ended up crew chief for Stacy Compton in a, in a truck deal and it, that was a Ford and um, Dodge was sort of struggling mm-hmm. at the time with their with their Dodge program with the trucks yeah and they approached me to, to help them you know be be part of a Dodge deal so we flew up there and long story short we um, we built a Dodge we kind of snuck over into the corner there and we built our own Dodge and uh, I, you know did you get involved with uh, bill davis any of that time i uh, know i was off on my own so oh, gotcha. um you know sorry yeah. way not but you'll remember we moved the cage we moved the <laughs> yeah we moved the greenhouse of that truck back two feet on the body okay. and we shrunk the center up eight inches and went over and tested charlotte motor speedway with it yeah and just dominated uh you know the forward mm-hmm. that we brought too so wayne's like uh yeah that's a little too much Anyways, we put half of that back, and uh, we had a great year with Dodge in that 99 season. Mm -hmm. We sat on, like, six poles, led the points. David Hodson was the owner, and this was when um, Rick Kendrick was was an owner, and and Childress was an owner, and Earnhardt was an owner, and Roush was an owner. I mean, this guy named David Hodson, we were leading the points. So that did a lot for me with Dodge. And mm-hmm. that's when I went on to the cup deal. Started with Bill Elliott because Everham bought the team. The whole Dodge thing, right. thing yeah. happened there. I remember they did some of the design changes with the um, in the truck series after John uh, Nemechek got killed. Whenever his truck to flip, his truck turned and then hit the wall at, at Miami Homestead. Yeah, so that was uh, that was way back, right? That's way yeah, back that was, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah that and, was uh, that was. Uh, I think that was ninety. Eight maybe no 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 it was it was early it was early early so yeah, yeah we were down there and they changed the racetrack after mm-hmm. that if you remember yeah because that was sort of a an, uh, a little indie is sort of what they they it was very flat and you would go into the turn and there was a little straightaway and then you'd turn again yeah. kind of like India shape mm-hmm. um, that was a tough design not much for slowing down but. I mean, it's hard to unknow what we know today. Yeah. And to think about what we did uh, when John Hunter um, did. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not John Hunter. It's John, John, John Nemechek. Yeah. John Nemechek, when he left us with an unfortunate accident, mm-hmm. the stuff that we did to improve it, it to look at what we are doing today was uh, is, is pretty tough, you know. Yeah. And I, I mean, I just feel like we're going to look ahead. We're going to look back at what we're doing now and, and – um, People are going to laugh at us because liter- literally we are taking cords and keeping our head attached to our shoulders by our rope. Right. Yeah. Oh, right? I remember when they first come out with these, the Hans <laughs> device and the head and neck restraint. Yeah. Uh, there was another one too when they first come out with it, but 
Uh, I Hutchins. remember thinking, eh, Hutchins. Hutchins device, yes. Yeah. That's right. And uh, and it seems like Earnhardt was against those at first, it seemed. Uh, Tony was big time against them. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they, you know, Earnhardt still drove with that open face helmet and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. I know everything's changed. And then now the pit crews wear helmets where, versus when I was doing it. I, I was a jackman for seven years. And, uh, yeah, we never wore helmets and any of that stuff. But looking back, it's like that's probably pretty stupid, I mean, in a way. You know? <laughs> well, the, you know, what we get used to, you know, yeah. you can't unforget anything, right? So, yeah. everything has um, – everything has evolved and and i hope that it continues to to progress because it is still a dangerous sport right you know mm-hmm. and a lot of people talk about it that maybe has lost some of the luster mm-hmm. of of what people are tuning in to see right yeah unfortunate unfortunate yeah yep unfortunate but um you know um you know i uh, for having a son in yeah. it now i'm mm-hmm. very grateful that right. the safety's at sure. where where yeah. it's at yeah i'm sure you are and so how did you get your son involved in it? You know, like I was an engine builder and a jack man or whatever, but my son, when he come along, he was more interested in baseball and football and these types of things. And then he just, he just wasn't really interested in cars. He was more interested in cleaning his car, or how the stereo sounded. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think if, you know, if you're, you're in a generational family that, that that's what they did. They worked on cars and they raised cars. My uncles did it. My dad, you know, everybody, mm-hmm. right, everybody yeah. did it. That's what we did. That's what we knew. It's what we're passionate about. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, that's what we're passionate about. So, sure, yeah. If you if you can chase your passion, so, um, but it's not really the reason that he's in a race car. Um, so, like I told you, I was off and I was pretty hot and heavy in that racing world, and you lived it, mm-hmm. you know. And when you're home, you're not home. Right. And uh, I started this deal. I had no wife, no children, no anything, and didn't get very far into that Cup career where I looked back and. I then had three children and a wife to care for, and I and and, and I looked at, uh, I kind of looked at that my future as a crew chief. Mm-hmm. I didn't look that far ahead back when I was younger, yeah. and I looked forward, right. and I was like, okay, so I'm either gonna do TV stuff or I mean, what else is there? Work in the parts room. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, there's mm-hmm. there's not much for those guys in that era to move on to. Right. You know, yeah. so you're you're completely focused on it, and and I saw that, and I wasn't willing to continue to go down that path. So, uh, we decided to do something different. We moved to San Diego, California, and my wife was home raising these three children. She had uh, three car seats across the Durango, oh, well. which Durango <laughs> was part of that whole Dodge package. They so are close cool. in age, I guess. Very close in age. Oh yeah, well. and. Um, <laughs> So they they were raising themselves, but the daughter, my daughters, were taking care of the little boy here, mm-hmm. and um, and I really got to know them better because I wasn't racing and mm-hmm. we were driving across the country. And I, but I noticed I was tuned into. They would ask Dawson a question before he could finish it. They would answer his question for him. So he's sitting over oh. there. He's got it made. Yes, <laughs> he had it made. He was mama's boy. I mean, Ashley, poor little girl. She was dumped in the preschool when she was like two, and Dawson wasn't allowed to go to preschool until <laughs> he was like five or six. So <laughs> the makeup was a little different. Yeah. Anyways, I, I stuffed him into a race car out there because he he had to do it. Yeah. Okay. I he see. was going to have to learn. It it was a way for independence. Yes. You know, and make mm-hmm. him become a, a, a person and have to do it. And no one could do it for him. Yeah. And that's what that's what started it. And then he wouldn't let it go. So we continued. With yeah. It. So Dawson, how old were you when you started driving? And um, five when I started really racing. Yeah. I think I was five. OK. And what did you start on? Uh, I started on dirt in a mini dwarf. I don't know if you know what that is. A mini dwarf. Yeah. I don't think I've heard of that. You know what a dwarf car is? Uh, is that the one that's with the uh, the the. Uh, is it like you race at Millbridge? Or no? no, those are okay. the those are the outlaw carts. Yes. But uh, you obviously know what a legend car is, right? Right. Yes. So a dwarf car is kind of like a legend car with no rules. They got oh. like a metal body and they have a unlimited motor, but they're all four cylinders. Oh, okay. So the legend cars run uh, inline four or inline three, mm-hmm. and the uh, dwarf cars all run inline fours, but it's kind of open. Okay. Yep. So speaking of Millbridge, you did race some out there, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. I ran there for two or three years on a factory deal with uh, SKE. I was their factory driver. I was running asphalt stuff, bandos. I think I was just in bandos when I started on back into dirt. Okay. But um, Cal Beatty owned Legend Cars and Bandoleros, and he kind of approached me and him because he has, you know, mm-hmm. 
a sense for setting up race cars and building them. Well, he was starting to build these outlaw carts. He bought a company from a guy from out in California yeah. and wanted to keep building the chassis and get into the dirt a little bit. And they were kind of struggling a little bit. So he brought me in and we kind of struggled a little bit, but that was kind of the point was to grow the business and the company. So then we started winning a little bit and then we started selling the cars out of victory lane. So like every week we would build a new car throughout the week. All I'd right. show up, get in it. More than likely we would win the race and then sell it out of victory lane. And then I'd race it the next week. All right. So, and yeah. then I also ran a, uh, a legend car on dirt a little bit when I turned 12. Yeah, I, I ran that was it a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Was that at Charlotte around the little uh, dirt track out back? Uh, so they <laughs> paved that. that oh, the fifth did. mile is now asphalt. Okay. I ran there in uh, Bandos and Legends, but uh, I ran dirt legend cars at Millbridge. Yeah. And then I also ran asphalt legend cars, kind of toured around the southeast a little bit. Yeah, um, we were talking about Kenny Colds back earlier, so... We went out to Millbridge, and this is back whenever Millbridge was kind of like a little small um, tract. And I lived right down the street from there, so I used to take my, me and my neighbors would get together. I built engines for all of them. We'd go race them in our own series because I told them none of the engines are legal. I mean, I do everything I can, and I make mine a little bit better. But anyway, we go race, so um, and they call it the Outlaw Division. Mm -hmm. But Kenny, one time we went out there. We went out there with I don't know if Kenny was with me. We went with the Everton Hams, and we just kind of like went on a weekend where they went, or maybe it was a Sunday. And we just went out there and just like uh, took over the track and practiced and run and stuff. And Kenny came out there with a shifter cart, and he is like a 250 shifter cart or a five. I don't even remember. He can probably answer. And uh, he hooked his laptop to it, and I mean, he was tuning the thing and doing all this stuff. You know? And then that's whenever I figured out, you know what? They could actually run faster cars, or not cars, but faster, you know, sprint cars and things like that in that track. Or little mini sprints it is whatever yeah they're starting to run uh micro sprints there now too so they're a little bit bigger mm -hmm. they got the motor up front but uh it's crazy how much that track has grown they've done a really good job over there it's got yeah. like a gigantic race world usa with a sprint car on top of it <laughs> oh up wow. there and, i'm gonna have to go back out there and see it i remember having little drivers meetings i bet they've changed quite a bit over what the, year was that the years. you were out there it was uh gosh what year was that uh kenny he says Sunday at 250. It was a Sunday and it was a 250. Yeah. Um, I would, I'm guessing probably 97, wow. thereabouts. Yeah. So uh, I wasn't even born. Yes. Right. <laughs> Before yeah. you were born. Yeah. And yeah. I've got a video on a VHS tape of me racing around there. So you know what yeah. that is, right? It's yeah. not an A track. Yeah. You know what A track is? How that's many? how you play music, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. But how many tracks are on an A track? Anyway, that's, I'm just kidding. That's another story. <laughs> All right. So, so, um, Tell me about the rest of your story, how, you know, you got in and you're racing those and then. So, um, like I said earlier, I started five in a mini dwarf. So it, I think I kind of misled what I was saying earlier. Mini dwarf is a tiny dwarf car. So it's tiny legend car. Mm -hmm. They got like a little, you know, the little clone motors or predator motors, a little five horsepower motor. Yes, yep. I do. So it had one of those in it and it had a full roll cage. So it was safer. And I ran those out there until I was probably about seven. Mm -hmm. on the west coast and then we moved back out here to north carolina and about that time we tried to get the mini dwarf started around here on the dirt track and that's actually the first time i went to millbridge was i tested one of those went up to woodleaf okay. but we couldn't really get it started and then we built a uh, dirt track behind our shop in troutman there you go so we ran it back there and then yeah. they're kind of like well he needs to keep racing so they put me into a bandolero mm -hmm. and i ran those until you know, I was 12, and during that time, I started getting into the dirt stuff and went into dirt legend cars and asphalt legend cars, ran road courses and, like, quarter-mile ovals. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest track we went to is, like, at three-eighths. Yeah. We used to go to three-eighths miles, like Hickory and Orange County and a Bandolero, and we'd bump draft. Oh, with wow. Because nice. they'd have a restrictor plate on them. He'd just be to the floor, and we'd uh, bump draft with them. We actually had the track record still up at Langley. Yeah, was, plate. was that fun to do that? I mean, was that the did you have more fun doing that or, or um or i think i'm like? having more fun now because i understand it a lot better mm -hmm. i'm not that i wasn't involved back then but right now i'm completely invested in it and i understand everything that's going into it and i'm traveling a lot more and understanding the importance of traveling and yeah. you know kind of how much goes into it and then you know getting to see the outcome of it and enjoying it mm, yeah i know back whenever me and your dad were Back in the 90s, mid-90s, it was like, I used to say I worked eight days a week, and that's pretty much oh, what you felt like. Yeah. 
I felt like a zombie till about Wednesday, and then I was finally getting my energy back. And yeah, and then by the time by the weekend, I know Phil knows all about that too. Uh, going to the track is just wear you out. But yeah, it's a tough. It's a tough. It's a tough sport, you know, and it, it will eat you up and, and, and spit you out if you don't, um, if you're not able to, to, to bring the right people in, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and take some of that load. So one of the things that I, I see what, what you're talking about is like whenever my son was born, I decided that I needed to get off the road. I need to go coach him in baseball. But had I said, if had he been interested in racing and that kind of stuff, I could have said, hey, let's go get her. Let's start. He did go do a little go-kart racing, but it just wasn't for him. But then that's another way that you can spend time with your son and and your and your daughters and whatever go to the track. Yeah, I mean for sure. for, for for us mm-hmm. for our unit here um, is it, it was a way to uh, for all of us to connect. So we when we went to put, put him in a mini dwarf and we're up at California, everybody was involved. I mean the family was there, everybody was there. Sure. As a matter of fact, we used to put Ashley in. The yeah. car, All right. just yeah, just so that she would um, let us know what the thing was doing because Dawson was able to communicate it, and uh-huh. and she ended up getting rides up there, so she was up there racing these mini oh, dwarfs right. for other people <laughs> <laughs> that yep. were there. I'm going, what is going on? So we that didn't cool. do it with any. Uh, we we always did it so that the family could. It was a reason for the family to go together sure. as a unit. The girls were very involved with horses. Um, at the same time, but we didn't do that a lot as a family because we didn't all understand it. Yeah. That was sort of something you paid someone else to go and, and take care of your kid, and we see that mm-hmm. a lot in racing. We're fortunate that we've not had to do that, and um, we also couldn't really afford to do this. I mean, you talk about how competitive it is in the time that it takes, So, um, uh, and, and I would tell people, I could probably find out what Jimmy Johnson's racing this Sunday mm-hmm. a lot easier than I could find out what the guy winning this Bandolero is going to race for a setup tire. It's oh, yeah, very sure. secretive, yeah. you know, uh, and the, the the little league <laughs> syndrome yeah. and the parents and all that oh, stuff and this yes. Bandolero deal. It, it can be tough, <laughs> can but imagine. we we had to turn it into a business mm-hmm. for it to survive, uh, for us to be able to to maintain it and keep it going. So. Um, we, we still take care of legend cars and not really many bandoleros anymore, but we still do that as a business model. And we all did as a family and Ashley would be up there singing the national anthem at the summer shootout up mm-hmm. on stage. All right. Very good. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody Give us had a, a sample. Job. Uh, no. Give us a sample. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny uh, comes back asking for we you. We have talk. a question here. It's, I don't mean to interrupt. No, it's you're not good. that oh, important, but uh, Kenny wants to know if the girls talk. Oh, <laughs> I haven't had a chance quite to a talk lot, actually. Yeah, usually, I I'm trying to not because I don't. Well, you can like express Ashley what it's like to see your brother race. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's always a joy bringing Dawson to the racetrack and watching him do what he loves all the time. No, he's come really far. He's grown so much, and I'm very proud of him. All right. And all the things that he's accomplished. <laughs> Very nice. Does she talk like that when we're not on camera? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it gets it can, it can be tough. Yes. Me and her are actually pretty competitive. Like Very. Very. <laughs> All right, so are you going to race anymore, Ashley? No. No, okay, no, no more racing. I, I actually got sat down at one point, and oh. it was, do she you retired. want to race oh. or do you want to ride horses? And I chose oh. horses. Okay. And he said, why? <laughs> yep. That's the path I took. Yeah, Still sir. doing it. <laughs> All right. Um, so Scott Trevison down in Florida, Sea Tunes. He says, uh, "What is your? What was your favorite driver growing up?" NASCAR oh, driver. there was a there's a number of them. I think first it was kind of Tony Stewart. Okay. And then it went to like Dale Jr. All right. And then uh, actually, when I got my first Bandolero, we were out at Dale Jr.'s property. You know, how he has a couple little racetracks out there. Yeah. We were testing my Bandolero on Junior's little track out there and when brad keselowski was driving his xfinity car was right around that time so he lived in one of uh the houses on junior's property he came out there and watched us make a couple laps Mm -hmm. and uh ever since that day i love brad so brad's great yeah Yeah. we actually work with his dad and his brother on our truck stuff bob and brian oh okay yep i remember when his dad drove yep way back in the truck series dawson do you uh yeah what would be your best bob keselowski story Oh, um, 
So, <laughs> I don't know if I can say this one on the air. <laughs> so I got two that come to mind. Um, one time we were over there and we were working and uh, we were changing something on the truck up on the pull down rig. And he's sitting there hammering something down with the impact with one of those Allen sockets. His thing snaps off and he stays on the trigger, goes straight through his hand. Oh my gosh. But uh, he doesn't say anything. He yeah. just kind of pulls it out, sets it down, and I'm, you know, at the rear of the truck. He's up at the front of the truck, and I'm working. And then finally, it's probably been like two minutes, my dad yells at me. He's like, go help Bob. I was like, all right. So I walk up to the front of the truck. There's a puddle of blood and uh, <laughs> a trail to the bathroom. Yeah. I walk over there, and Bob's in there, one hand up like this with blood pouring down. Uh. Like, just calm, just rummaging through the bathroom cabinets, looking for Band-Aids. Oh, wow. Well. And then... <laughs> I sat there and patched him up. If I had to go help somebody like that, they would be helping me next. <laughs> I'd be laid out on the floor. Faint at heart. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't do blood very well, mm. especially yeah. my own blood. Yeah. So. so this sport, this this sport is missing. Not to interrupt him, yeah, and sure. we'll let him finish. But this sport, in my opinion, I don't know that it has changed as much as the perception has changed, and, and certainly the people that go in and dig hard and that are passionate. And I want to build something that beats you, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you want to build something that beats me, right? Right. I yes. mean, that's what racing is. Right. It's uh, in our blood, we, as you say. It's in our blood, yeah. yep. And um, so uh, today it, is, it, it seems to be more of a business model. And the, and the people that are making it um, through the ranks are getting opportunities and getting shots have a lot better connections with inside uh, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, some way right. you can you can check you can follow the money. You look at somebody having an opportunity, follow the money. Yeah, and you'll figure out why they're there. I, I think that's giving the sport a black eye. Yeah, uh, it certainly is. In, in in my uncles, my parents, people that I know, um, people that grew up and they would dig uh, 10, 12 hours a day right there with you to try build something to go and beat you. Right. Right. Yes. I mean that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And um and, and then you wanted to keep that to yourself. Um, that part is missing. Bob Keselowski is from that era. Yeah. Okay. He it's built crazy. Hemi's in pickup trucks down at Daytona, hoping mm -hmm. to make the race. That was their dream. That was their goal. It was an accomplishment and it wasn't for sale. You could not go buy that. You couldn't go say, Hey, build me this engine. Right. You had to do it. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Um, and that's the way that it was done. So we are, we are. We are doing this in an old school, if you will, sort of mentality. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dawson and I are digging and my family's involved and everybody's doing what we can. If you look at the recipe, it doesn't equal success. Well, and, and, and for a little while, it seemed like it was more like uh, these, the dads that had a lot of money would, would pay for their sons to have rides, mm -hmm. you know, and it got to be that way for a while, but it seems like it's turning back around. Gosh, I hope you're right because yeah. we, we don't have that option. Right. Yeah. So I hope you're right, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but Bob Keselowski likes what we're doing. Mm -hmm. He sees yeah. it, it yeah. fits what he's doing. That right. man gets up, and he's thinking about our truck. Yes. He stops by, and he's thinking about our truck. That's great. So this has, this has, yeah, this yes. has breathed a lot of life back into him, and uh, it's, it's raised it. You know, I can just see the pep in the stack. Yeah. Lo love the guy. Yeah. Anyways, um, Dawson, tell your second favorite story, because it's pretty funny. <laughs> so is that why you're like uh, DK and he's BK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, um, I don't know if you've ever been to their shop, but you go in and there's a pull down on the right and then a surface play right there. And then they're, they have an office in the center. And, uh, so I went down there and I went to go pick up a spring or something like that. I walk mm -hmm. into the, I'm walking around the shop and I saw Bob's truck outside. I'm like, where's Bob? So finally I decide I'm going to walk into their office and I've never been inside their office ever mm -hmm. because they don't really use it. They're just racers that work inside this shop. They right. don't really use their office. But, um, so I walk, you kind of got to go upstairs and I go up the stairs. I look inside and Bob's just laying flat on the ground, just sprawled out <laughs> okay. with his, and he has a little dog that walks around the shop. Her name's Millie. She's a little white multi poo. Mm -hmm. Millie's sitting there like licking his face or something. I'm like, Oh Oh no, Bob's dead. <laughs> We've lost Bob. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just walked time. in and Bob's dead. So um, I kind of freaked out a second. I was like, Bob. And he, he just kind of looked up at me. He's like, what? I was like, <laughs> I was like, 
are you sleeping? He's like, yeah, I'd like to take naps in the shop. I was like, on the oh, floor? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Gonna, and his, yeah. Now it makes sense because his dog's in there with a little towel on yeah. her. <laughs> you know, uh, Bob, where's that spring? <laughs> that's great. Yes. Go back to sleep. Um, I was actually doing that, I, I, uh, you know, build engines. And then I would, I lay down on the floor one time and I kind of knew my boss was coming through, but I just decided I'm just going to lay in the floor <laughs> and uh, got, got, everybody got a crack out of it because he walks by and then he stops and comes back and look, he's like, Ham, what are you doing? You know, I just do stuff like that. Yeah. Just sort of heck yeah. of it. Yeah. Just laid out on the floor. Yeah. That's great, man. That's a funny story. He sounds like a real character. I, oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen him since back in the nineties pretty much. Yeah. Um, so Bob, 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 um, He's he is setting a lot of records right now, believe it or not, because he's from that he's from that era. Yeah. Buying speed racing. Yeah, he takes a he has an old oh, cup car. Okay. Yep. That's what Kenny Kozbeck's into also. Oh really? Yes. Yep. So Bob's out there breaking records, Kenny. Come on. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? <laughs> I, think, I think he's been doing some too, but <laughs> yes, we'll have to challenge him on that one to see what's up. Yeah, Scott Felter. Uh, Scott says Felter housing. Do you know Scott Filterhausen? I think he drives a truck for one of the teams, and I'm sorry that I don't remember who it was. He says, you got kids that can't change motor oil, parents writing checks, and the kids don't care if things get tore up. That's that's very true. Well, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, here's the problem. That's not that, – that's, that, that's what everybody's saying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, these kids that are getting these opportunities, let's not take anything away from them because mm-hmm. nobody's teaching them how to change the oil. And right. do you really need to know how to change the oil? Yeah. I mean, so mm-hmm. I, when I hear that said, I think it's a black eye to these kids who do have these opportunities. I, I see some very talented people come through here. Yeah. Now, uh, we can get bitter about it because we don't have the money to support it. But William Byron was a very special person, and we knew it when he showed up on the scene. Yeah, didn't he race in? Uh, he, he did a lot of eye racing type stuff. Uh, we don't know his story. But okay, gotcha, gotcha. We, we, yeah. we only know what mm-hmm. uh, we only know what we seen. Okay. You know, there's a 14 year old kid showed up. He jumped in a legend car, mm-hmm. and um, he was he was disciplined. That okay. is is what he was. Yeah. He was a very disciplined, very polite, tuned in person. Yeah. And uh, they connected themselves with the proper people. Yeah. And and went through the ranks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and he's handling himself well. And it, and um, to me, that's not really the way that you did it, right? Um, he he's proven that to be wrong. Yeah. Uh, well, I think some of the some of the uh, I don't know if it's misconception or whatever is that the whenever uh, all right. So Brad Kozlowski, like he could, I believe Brad could actually work on his own equipment if he had to. Or he does. I mean, and he's got his business. And he's got his uh, he's doing his uh, machine shop and all this kind of stuff. Sure, but, but he's a play, very smart guy. Sure, but does that make him better than William Byron? I mean, you or know what I mean? his teammate Joey Logano. Well, it's kind of this kind of goes back to the same deal where I was saying, where my let's say my son is not interested in the cars, but he's more interested in driving the car. So yeah, I could see that too as being a thing. Here's um, here's what I want to change a perspective of. If we can, we'll just stay sure. out one more second mm-hmm. because I think it's important. I think it's important that uh, the next generation coming up, people that are going to tune into Dawson's and, 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 and the William Byron's, ever, this next generation, I think that we need to know what it is that will inspire them. Um, let them know that they have a shot and let them know that um, hard work and dedication does pay off. And it's not just full of people, uh, rich kids um, that can't change their oil, mm-hmm. right? The, okay. the, the place is changing. Fair enough. Uh, Kenny says 481 mile an hour speed demon. Is that a record? That's what um, I believe so because he sent me a video and the lady's just like, like she's just she's reading out the numbers and then it just keeps on going and keeps on going. So I believe Bob's doesn't have wings. I mean, his stays, his stays yeah. on the ground. Yeah, his, I, I remember seeing a picture of it. It's like mostly all carbon fiber. It looked like a real car. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's amazing. It's like going the speed of an airplane. That's incredible. Uh, on the ground. Yeah. I don't know that that's safe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kenny's kind of like crazy, uh, crazy bad. He goes, he gets into all this stuff. That just like I said, that brings the go kart out there. And I've got my little five horsepower Briggs engine. That was before the Predator type deal. And then um, you know I'm putting around. And then he comes out there with that 250 shifter cart with the computer. He can plug to it and tune it in. I'm like, man, okay, then take it to the next level. And I actually had a friend that brought a Sprint car, a Mini Sprint. 
And I think it, it was too big for that track, though. Yeah, they got like 450s yeah. that are fuel injected in them now. Okay. And uh, they ran like two stroke 500s when I ran them. Yeah. All right. So we got a uh, Steve Baker. He says, I feel you need to pay a little dues to earn your ride. And I know we talk about drivers like William Byron, who probably doesn't work on his car as much as you do. But Dawson, now that you've got your own team, you have your own team. Let everybody know what it's like to work on that truck every day and how how it feels to maybe have have to work on it after you wreck it at Talladega and get caught up in a wreck that you can't get, yeah. you know, do much about. Oh, uh, your back hurts. Sure. Yeah. Your back hurts when you sit on the ground and you have to pull that thing apart, and then every time you look at it, it hurts a little bit more, and then your pocket starts to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> your pocket after. hurts, too. So is that something whenever you're driving, you're like, okay, I better uh, take this, take it easy on this thing? Cause, no. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm going to end up working on it. But that's good, though. I right. mean, there's certain discipline you have to have. Mm-hmm. And this was, I felt like it was even more when I was driving for other people was to take care of the equipment. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go far if I keep tearing stuff up. True. Unfortunately, for the past like three weeks, we've had a little bit of bad luck, but only one of them I could really tie to myself. Like Talladega, that was just, it's Talladega. It's kind of how it happens. You know, yes. we started wrecking. Mm-hmm. So on through a stupid block, they started wrecking. We got caught up in it, yeah. killed a truck. But, um, being an owner kind of opens your eyes because you kind of see all different sides of the sport. And I don't know if I'm really, you know, an owner owner. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not. Well, I'm not Roger Penske. Right. I'm more like a. I'm not even Josh Rayum. <laughs> uh, who? <laughs> Josh Rayum. Oh, okay. Come on. <laughs> you gotta know. You gotta know the African squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? But yeah. the, the neat uh, thing though is that. <laughs> Um, Bob Keselowski ran K Automotive and ran his own race team. Yeah, and you know that's uh, this. This is an old school mentality. Yeah, well, I, you're starting. He's starting young, though. I mean, and you learn as you go, and in another twenty years or whatever, you, if you're still doing it, and and then you could be a, another Roger Penske. I mean, or whatever you want to be. I mean, that's the whole thing too. The sky's the limit. If you don't want to be, then you just want to keep racing. I mean, it's whatever you want it to be. Um, uh, Kenny Kozovac said the fastest pissing car in the world. Yes, it's a record. Did I read it? Uh, 60 passes over 400. Yes. Um, and then Scott Trevson's asking, how do we follow Dawson's racing career? And are you going to run the full truck season next year? So next year is not decided at all. We really haven't even talked about it. Okay. Just kind of hearsay. I've had a couple of people come up to me and be like, I want you full time. Mm-hmm. And I would be willing to walk away from what we have going right now to go full-time for someone else. We just kind of fell into what we're doing right now. And then, um, but before I get into that, you can follow all all my social medias at Dawson Cram. So Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, all that's at Dawson Cram. I think that the Facebook's Dawson DK Cram Racing, something like that. But, um, or you can just Google my name. And what's the DK for? Uh, Dawson Kevin. Kevin, okay. Yeah. So his name, and it's also my middle name. Okay. Well, very cool. Makes sense. Um, <laughs> or Donkey Kong. <laughs> uh, there you go. All right, so, so um, go ahead, Phil. In honor of the beer man, he would normally ask a yeah. question. <laughs> to yes. Maybe Dawson, you wouldn't have any answer to that. And, uh, but we're going to ask Kevin, what would be your best Dale Earnhardt Sr. story? Um, depends on if you want it to be a mushy one or a good one. Um, my favorite time uh, as a family was, uh, Kimberly and I were engaged. We were at the, um, we were at the, uh, reception for the championship. You can't swear on this. (laughs) And, um, he, he sat down between Kimberly and I and put his arms around us and, and, uh, said, look, I've been married three times and, uh give you a word of advice and he uh and i'm not going to share any advice but uh, mm-hmm. but we um you know a very special moment because it was heartfelt and it was i don't think that there was many times that you got to uh have his undivided attention where he actually showed that he cared i i mean i didn't sure you know that often i thought that was a great special time because it was genuine and it was just it it wasn't my idol because he he was yeah. the man was my idol. He wasn't my idol sitting there. He was a friend. Uh, that was a friend moment. That was a good. That was a good time. I've got a lot of neat stories, but so the truck series came out with this stupid rule 
I say it stupid, sorry, Wayne. But um, they came out with a rule to trying to limit uh, how many tires you could bring. And obviously, uh, the, the top teams like Earnhardt, uh, we'd bring as many tires as we could fit into the hauler. Right. And um, so they, they, they wouldn't let us bring new tires. We had to bring tires with the stickers being they're called scuffs. Mm -hmm. So the sticker had to be gone. And you couldn't just peel it off, so we had to do something. So we decided that I would put the tires on Hornaday's truck and back down by Earnhardt's chicken coops because he had, like, all these chicken coops. Mm -hmm. He sold the Tyson and all them guys. Yeah. And I was down there just doing a little burnout. I mean, not like smoke show like kids do. On the side. I was just kind of burning the back, the, the stickers off them. Then yeah, right. The pit crew was set up there, and I would go up, and they put the fronts on the rear and back it back down. Well, he come flying up, and he was raising cane mm -hmm. until he understood why we were doing it. But he was so mad at me. He said, I want you to go out onto three. Go out on that highway out there. I was, I, it actually was not three. It was then. One, 136 back then. It was then. 136. Yeah. yeah. You go right. out on 136 and you do that. So I yeah. did it. And I'm like thinking, I don't know if, <laughs> yeah. I, don't know if I should be doing this. <laughs> right. And then he came back and uh, let me do it down at the chicken coops. He asked me how many sets I had left. Um, that was pretty good. Uh, you're laying down some rubber for him. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it was uh, all in the good not, for the team, but yeah. he was not happy when he showed <laughs> up and we were filling his chicken coops with, with tire smoke. Yeah, sure. What you got, Phil? Well, we did that in honor of the beer man because he always likes to ask your favorite Sterling Marlin question. But I Oh, well, do, yeah. we need, do we need one of them? I got one. We'll close with that, but we're going to ask Scott Feldhausen wants to know, if Kevin and Dawson weren't in the racing industry, where would they be working today? Mm, I'm going to let Dawson answer that one first, and then I will do it. Check it. Burger King, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Auto Bell. Auto. Auto Bell, yeah. I got friends that will make like 400 bucks at Auto Bell a week just off of tips. He shot yeah. high. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. 400 bucks for yeah. tips. Oh, wow. Well, uh, one of them's a manager, so. Oh, okay. So he kind of. So how does he make the money? Does he uh, is he washing them too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they all are. All right, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I get free car washes. I'm on the deal. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. They're one of your sponsors. You need to put a sticker on your <laughs> race truck, right? <laughs> Costs a little bit more than ten sure. bucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. So what about you, Kevin? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. I think um, so. Before I was racing professionally at, after high school, I worked in the construction field uh, installing sprinkler systems for fire protection. Mm -hmm. Really tough on your back. Sure. I mean, heavy, heavy, heavy. heavy. It's a pipe fitter. Yeah. 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 Everybody in the pipe fitting business had bad backs and all that stuff. So I don't know what it would have turned into, but that's the path I was heading on before I decided to uh, take the racing passion mm -hmm. professionally. All right. So Scott says yes. Kevin, what is your best uh, Sterling Marlin story? Sterling Marlin. All right. I mean, I'm not good at the accents, right? Yeah. But um, so Sterling, uh, I took a job with, with Ganassi, and I was supposed to be Sterling Marlin's crew chief. That's when the whole Dodge thing was big, and they loved me. Yes. And um, so I, I went there, and we went out to test, and um, Mid, Mid Valley Transmissions, who was big in the IndyCar stuff with the transmission stuff. Okay. They were from out that way. They built us a transmission, and we went out there, and we were testing other things too, but we're out in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and Sterling's driving, and, and he comes, and he's giving us all this feedback about this, that, and the other, and I said, so Sterling, what, I mean, I've got to tell this man something. What did you think about the transmission? Yeah. It ain't worth a F. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I might have to give him more than that, Sterling. Yeah. <laughs> what is it that we don't like about it? And he says, well, I pretty much grew up with the others. I'm like, and that, so to interpret that, yeah. he pretty much grew up driving other style of transmission. So in his mind, it wasn't worth the time of day. So yeah, that's I, my Sterling Marlin. I know one of his, uh, one of his first sponsors and I got the postcard. It says Hesco transmissions on the side of, uh, of his car mm -hmm. from, from way back. Um, I know one time he, well, he was telling me that, well, I was his jackman for several years, and he was telling me he had some books for me. I got some books for him. I'm bringing them. And then, so I think we were at Darlington or somewhere, and he yeah, he forgot them one week at, at Rockingham or something. And so he said, I'm going to bring those books for you. And so I was like, so he gives me a bullet. And I'm like, I thought you said you had some books. I was trying to figure this out. But it was <laughs> a, a uh, yeah, man. Yes. But you know how his accent oh, is. Oh, yes. And, yes, uh, sir. It was uh, actually, we got some Civil War bullets sitting around here. <laughs> 
And I was going to show you, that's exactly what it gave me. But it still had like the casing on it. Yeah, that right there. And uh, mini ball or whatever it's called. <coughs> and so he, he gave me that and he gave me a little uh, a little Confederate soldier, a little figure. And uh, so that was very cool. Very so, nice of him. So too. do you guys <laughs> think, just think about the characters. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's missing today? Uh, I've been saying that for many years that, oh, yeah. yeah. And I know uh, Phil could definitely agree. I think we actually talked about that son when he was on a couple weeks ago. Um, definitely missing, and 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 part of that too, I think uh, NASCAR started putting the you know putting the block on if the if the driver got out of the car and he was mad and he's on TV and he's saying things you know back in the day they would lose their cool and they would go after each other and they would do it on the track and all this kind of stuff, and and it seems like the fans would get really fired up about that you know the stands would go crazy mm -hmm. you know with all this stuff but but then they started finding drivers like here's. $50,000 because of what you said on that interview. And I think it, a lot of the drivers uh, decided, well, I'm just not going to say anything, you know. I mean, I mean, really, I mean, do you have to look very far to not see the same makeup driver? And, and, and again, we look back at, at, and I don't want to make anybody mad, but, mm -hmm. but I'm going to. So you, you look back and, and you see everybody show up and they drive for the same team and all that stuff and the same, the same color car and all that stuff and their uniforms all fit perfect and their hairs are all cut the same but am i right or right. wrong yeah. they give the same interview they use the same playbook yeah they it's so cookie like, cutter cookie cutter right. racetracks didn't work cookie cutter drivers ain't gonna work right i mean we yeah. need some ward burtons and some sterling marlins yeah. and we need some rick mass and we yes. need some come on yes yeah, some dawson cream yes. flavor some flavor well dawson's <laughs> gonna be his own person That's for it. sure as much as, and, um, as much as some of the People don't like Kyle Busch. He adds a different. He's a different spice in the mix. Sure, you know? but I, I mean, mean, he owns it and he 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 earns it every week. But you know, he does. But he's one of the very few characters, and I don't know that yeah. Kyle's being himself anymore. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, right. Kyle. Right. I don't think you are. Right, I, I agree with that for sure. I think he's been you know molded to you be this. Yeah. Um, and then there's been other drivers that have had to to be molded. I mean, Tony Stewart was one. Now, he would lose his temper, but he had to go through, you know, the whole, uh, what was it they put him through, Phil, back in the day? Uh, uh, sensitivity training or sensitivity something. Sensitivity training, yeah. <laughs> it was something like that, so yeah. So, so look uh, at, I mean, let's look at what people really tune into, right? Yes. Have, have you watched that crazy Irishman that's an MMA fighter? Okay. Conor McGregor. Y yes, yeah. I have, yes. Conor McGregor, yes. who hasn't? Right, yeah. and his personality is How about like Muhammad explosive. Ali? Yeah. Right, yep. I mean, um, come, uh, come on. I know that's what uh, Steve Baker was just saying. Let's let them fight. Well, Chad's saying let them fight, but then uh, Steve said about the WWE. And I've been saying that too. Like, you know, WWE, the wrestling has a huge following. And they still do. I know this NASCAR is not wrestling, but it's still, it's exciting and people want to see that. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. There's a lot of things that can be done, but I, I just, you know, I. I don't know that you can create yeah. it. I don't think that NASCAR has to get involved or uninvolved to mm -hmm. create this. I just think that, um, you know, it's changing, and I and I hope that it changes back to where people can identify with the people that are coming up through, except for it, it instead of the people that can afford it. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard does. for me to identify for somebody who can go write a check yeah. for millions and millions and millions of dollars oh, every yeah. single year. Absolutely. Uh, to get a shot. And that's the thing about it. There's so many different personalities in this world. And if you have cookie cutter drivers, they're all the same, then they're only going to fit with this certain class of people. These, this are not necessarily class meaning, you know, rich people or whatever, but just saying you need someone to fit like every, all right, Earnhardt, he had his fan base. He had the fan that either you liked him or you didn't, mm -hmm. you know, and the same with Jeff Gordon, it's a totally different crowd of people. And then they liked him, but Earnhardt fans couldn't stand him, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that that makes it more interesting when you're there watching the race and you're pulling for that driver, and the other drivers right behind him bumping into him, and the fans are getting mad. I mean, it's just that whole range of emotions that they go through. And Scott Trevson says anger management—that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tony Stewart had to go through. Uh, yeah, anger management. <laughs> he was pretty tough, though. Oh at, yeah, at he that was. time. Where, yeah, for know. sure. No, so Dawson, where else are you going to run this year? I'll finish out the season. So Kansas this weekend, then we'll go to Texas, Martinsville, and then Phoenix. So I actually get to go to three tracks I've been to. It'll be the first time this year. So you race pretty good at Martinsville, right? I mean, I mean, we've ran good there, yes. Yeah. 
I mean, you're, you're running good, different play. What's your favorite track? This is what I'm getting at. Martinsville. Okay. I mean, yeah, the most. It's kind of hard to think about that because a lot of tracks I've only been to once, and then Martinsville, I've been there a few times, and I'm pretty comfortable there, and it kind of reminds me of the style of tracks I've been to growing up. But they're all so different, and then mm -hmm. it really depends on how good your car is going to drive that day. You're either going to love the place or yeah. hate the place. It's not going to be a monster. It's going to be, you know, your best friend. Sure, yeah. Um, Tracy just said that she noticed them. Her dad used to always, you know, home in a moody. Oh yeah. The shirt I'm wearing, yeah, and, and I'll show you the, the backs. The, but her dad used to, uh, uh, her dad used to call it the um, homeless and mu and muddy. <laughs> yeah. He worked there from 1963 till 71, I believe. What? And and uh, so did her. Yeah, her grandfather. His dad also worked there, 1963 yeah. to 70. Whenever they closed, I think it was somewhere around 71 or something like that. So I mean, if you follow the heritage or you follow the home in the movie. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, really, kids, that, that right there is why we live in Charlotte. I mean. Yeah. Didn't that, they come out with the first roll cage for NASCAR? Well, I don't know about that. But yeah, I'm not sure. If came out with a lot of firsts, but they they, probably... they're the reason that the hub is here in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, they gave, if you follow back, it just pick somebody, pick a Robert Yates or pick, pick somebody and follow them back. They were at home in Moody at, at some point. Right. Yeah, absolutely were. I was... Um, I was born about two miles from Charlotte Motor Speedway, and I don't remember it, of course, but it was two. Um, I mean, I lived there for my first two years. And then we moved down beside the airport down there, home in the Moody. So I'd ride my bicycle by there, and there was, like, all these other race teams down there, Kelly Arbor Motorsports and um, a bunch of other places, but the home in the Moody shop, you know, with all the glass and everything. But I just think it's neat. It's kind of like my – those are my roots of racing. That's when mm -hmm. it started, you know, and being born and raised there. Yes, go ahead, Phil. Scott Feldhausen wants to make himself available for you, Dawson. If you need a sign guy at Texas or Phoenix, just let him know. So, other than that, yeah, he drives for some trucks. Uh, he goes the hauler, the yeah. hauler. Yeah. yeah. So we we need I mean, a sign man every time we go to the racetrack. We are it's me and Dawson. So fill the holes, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, there you go. Uh, yeah. if he has anybody that can catch tires and yeah. hand second can, that'd be or awesome. Or push us through tech. Or push us through tech. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we, we oh, need help through tech. tech. Yeah. Maybe I should come out of retirement. I could. Please. I could still jack. The, I could jack a truck. That's one thing I never did do. I did a Winston West car uh, for Chuck Norris's son when he raced. Chuck. I, I, I yeah. dominated a race. We cut it. We cut it five. They cut it five laps short because I dominated with Eric Norris in, oh, yeah. in 1998 out there. Okay. We dominated California. It um, was a snooze fest. I'm thinking it was one of the years that, uh, I don't even remember, it was in Phoenix is when I right. checked for Eric Norris. Yes. Yeah, and, Scott says he, he hauls pit equipment. But uh, oh, okay. Beer Man wants to know if Dawson has any sponsors he wants to thank or can give support to. Uh, Magnum Contracting. They're out of mm -hmm. about North Dakota, and they've been a huge support. Circle Track Warehouse right there in Mooresville. They've been a huge supporter in Fluidine. Okay. And, and also, cool. we got uh, your brothers asking, how do you guys feel about the manufacturers Ford, Chevy, and Toyotas? Is there any difference other than the body wraps and any advantage in the engine department of one manufacturer over another? Who's asking? That's David's my uncle, brother. Randy. Yeah. So – um, Depends on the series. He was a huge Earnhardt fan back in the yeah. day. He so, even had a picture of him in his living room. So unfortunately, uh, or fortunate enough, yeah. uh, right now we're using uh, Ilmore has a spec engine. So right, uh, but this is only in trucks. So yeah, is that what he's asking? Truck specific? Pretty much your series, I'd say. Yeah, I, I, I thought so mm -hmm. too. So the uh, the uh, support above and, and beyond that. It's kind of like whoever you have re with uh, relationships with. So you know, for us, it's Chevy, right? Yeah. And um, and Chevy, uh, Chevy will help out any team. Uh, they at least provide you with the identity decals. You know, okay. the other series. Like if I was gonna go run a Ford, I'd have to go buy them, pay for them. Strange, yeah. strange combination. The Toyota, the Toyota deal is flooded. You know, it's almost like. Um, you know, if you got a contract with Walmart, it's like your best day and your worst day mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's it's Walmart. I mean, you want to sell in Walmart, but uh, then you got to adhere to their demands. You got to stay yeah. there all the time, and you got to right. stay there. Okay. So think about the Toyota. 
the Toyota seats are full. Mm -hmm. You got some very talented people just getting kicked to the curb. Yeah. That's a bad problem. Mm. Dawson, do you have any drivers that you've competed against the last couple of years that you really enjoy racing or you look up to or that have helped you? Or I won't ask you if any have hindered you. So somebody that I've raced with that I... There's not many that I've raced with that I really look up to, but uh, me and Sam Mayer raced together a lot in the past couple of years, and I really like racing against him. Me and him kind of think alike, even though we're so different. We kind of race the same, and we got that kind of respectful driving style, and we kind of save our equipment. Same style driving, I'd say. Hmm. So, um, Scott, it's asking us, uh, Pelterhausen, uh, what's a good handle or way to get in touch with y'all? I guess uh, your social media is probably. Yeah, um, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'll, I get to all of them pretty much. I try my best to. Yeah. Do you use your same uh, handle on all your social media? Yeah, pretty much? at okay. Dawson Cram. There you go. Yep. That's what it mine's. Mine's everything's D Ham I Am. And I tried to do Ham I Am, you know, like I do not like green eggs and ham, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, so <laughs> like Sam, Sam I, I Am. That's it. Exactly. Yes. For, but for me, if you want to get home, you're going to have to call me. Yeah. You're going to have to come see me. I'll have to give you out your phone And your phone number is 704. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, while I'm saying that, DHAM I Am, hit the subscribe if you would, because every Monday night at 730, I have a different guest on here. So, and it's great to have you on here. But we, um, we still got a few more minutes if you want to tell uh, any more stuff you want to tell your, your fans, your friends, and um, what your go future goals are, I guess. I don't really know if there are any goals. Just kind of see where it goes. See where it goes. Okay. Kind of. How, yeah. how about Kevin's opinion on the Cup Championship this year? Uh, I mean, you know, it's been this is horrible to say. It's been a long time since I've been a race fan. I can't even tell you who's in it. Right. So. Um, I mean, it's a. It's. A, I don't even know who's in yeah. and who's out. I have yeah. no idea. I know that it doesn't mean the same thing to me as it used to. Right. Yeah. I, I'm. Kind of, I'm with you too. I mean. Yeah, and that goes into another story, but that's why I like to do the racing roots. I like to talk about the history and, yeah. and what's yeah. you know where how you got your start yeah. in and in, into racing. For um, us, we hope it comes racing. back because we For are sure. doing you know with Dawson, we're doing the old school mentality is all that we mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and it's the only opportunity Dawson has. Yeah, you know, he mm -hmm. talked about a lot of people have come up to him and said, "Man, I want you to drive my stuff next year." They say that because mm -hmm. they feel like we're tied to money. Okay, you know. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and it's unfortunate. Yeah. So right. we need to uh, – we're, we're going to put our heads down and we're going to exhaust uh, this opportunity that mm -hmm. God has put into our laps. This literally fell into our laps. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, um, and one thing turns into another, turns into another, turns into another. Mm -hmm. And it's snowballing in the right direction, you know? Yeah. So Dawson's taking it a day at a time, an opportunity at a time, a race yeah. at a time, you know? He is going to be in the truck for the rest of the season. And, and what he means by that is that we're not really looking to put people in his numbered truck. We may have to to survive. Yeah. We may have to create those opportunities, but that's not the business model. Um, the, the reality is we're going out to Kansas with one truck. There's no backup truck. And yeah. we, we don't have an option for Texas. Okay. Yeah. We're going to enter the same truck, and if something happens, mm -hmm. whether it's his fault, somebody else, blame whoever you want, we won't be at Texas. I don't believe, unless God has another plan. Yeah, that's that's how we're having a race. I guess you can look at it like this: you're in a race, and what is your goal? You're looking at that checkered flag, and that's what you're going for, and that's one race at a time, right? Absolutely, it's one corner at a time. I mean, I'm trying to teach Dawson to to become a person too, but you know, and he can get overwhelmed about. Man, if we don't finish the race at Kansas, mm -hmm. then we don't get to go to Texas. And then what? And and really, you've got to handle turn one. Yeah. And then right. And right. then and then handle turn two. Yeah, one turn at a time. Okay. And then head right. down the backstretch, and then some other stuff's gonna happen. And before you know it, you're building blocks, and things are happening. And that's yeah. you, that's how you can do all of life. You know, yeah, you don't set sure. these unrealistic goals. And if I can't be I'm, I don't know why I keep saying William Byron, but uh, right. if we can't be William Byron, why even try? Yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That is ridiculous. And also. Let's be Bob Kozlowski. Right. That's exactly right. And also, if you said, all right, son, here's, uh, you know, 
ten million dollars. You're going to race the whole season. You got everything right here in your lap. What are you really teaching them? Well, what does he really yeah. appreciate too? No, yeah. Why, yeah, yeah. Why do you right. race? Well, Dad paid for it. Yes, exactly. I don't know if that's completely true. No, oh, you you would like mm-hmm. it. I'm sure. I, I would like it, but <laughs> of course, <laughs> I do. I do know. You know, growing up in racing, I do know some people that are you know more off that work extremely hard for it. Mm-hmm. So about the same amount as I do, just in different ways. Yeah. So uh, Kenny says, how old is Dawson? He... Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Kenny, you got some uh, carbon fiber stuff you want to uh, roll his way or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> Hand over. <laughs> Kenny's nice. composite. Uh, yeah, Man, right. we used to get the BE302. I remember the part yeah. number. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the air box he built for us. We had to have mm-hmm. him put them in all Sterling's cars, all of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. BE302. Bill Elliott 302. Had a nice flat bottom. <laughs> 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 How cool is that? Very famous. Yeah, Kenny must remember the part number. Yeah. I worked with him at Sabco. Uh, back in the day for a while uh, i don't even remember how i was there six years and so and then ganassi bought out or he bought you know mm-hmm. most of felix abadis is part of that and he wanted to get engines from from his guys instead of us building engines so that's why i ended up leaving there but i might have stayed there another 15 years you know but it you know the way, the way things happened it ended up leading me over to robert yates and then with ralph yates engines and that was a great place to work. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, so anyway, um, well, thank y'all so much for coming in, and uh, thank you, ladies, for joining them. You know? Yeah, and, and thanks for having along. the show for Racing yeah. Roots because us old guys, right? Yes. We yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, Make sure this yeah. weekend you're cheering for that truck number forty-one. That yeah. Team owned, to family finish. owned, to yeah. finish. finish. <laughs> it's like a snowball. It. Pick it up and throw it as hard as you can, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and thanks, Phil Cavalli, for coming in with us. Yes, you're uh, Star always of the great show. to see you. Yeah, he Star is. Of the feels, show. feels yeah, awesome. About that. Um, do and the I, Donald Duck. Yeah, do some. Donald Duck. Get, get ready. <laughs> no way. <laughs> uh, so I had a picture of Phil taking a picture of me getting ready to jump off fit wall. And I'm sure I got a lot of pictures that you, well, and you work for Winsk Up Scene, so I'm, there may be some in there. Yeah. Phil's got a picture of me hitting a tire carrier. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> tire carrier. Yeah, yeah, Martinsville. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He sprawled out on the windshield. When I met Phil, yeah. he had some long hair. Yes, that's when I remember him. When I saw him again, I was like, wow, man, you don't look the same. I know, come on. you got to bring yeah. it back. I don't know about that. It takes so long to, you know. The old mullet. Came so. off a lot quicker. That wasn't a mullet, man. That baby is a pony pail. <laughs> yes. I actually um, used that mane and tail stuff that Derek Cope had at okay. one point. Yeah, Kenny, whose birthday? Kenny says, awesome show, happy birthday, party going on, question mark. Does anybody have a birthday? I just had a birthday. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I got one tomorrow. Well, happy birthday to you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I'll be oh. 60 tomorrow. Happy birthday, Phil. Oh. Really? Happy oh, birthday, yeah. Phil. That's why oh, you yeah. say happy birthday. I mean, right. I mean, I mean 40. 40, yeah. 60 is a new 40. 41? All right. Sure. Have my harmonica. Yeah. All for one. Okay. All for one. That's his hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag all for one. All for one. one. All, for one. Yeah. all right. So thank you all so much once again. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe. And you can check out my website, dhamim.com. And we'll see you next week. Check out Racing Roots with Ham on Facebook to stay up to date on who we're going to have in here next week. So, Goodbye. Thank you, Ham. Thank you all.